my village, away from the hustle and bustle. It's so peaceful and calm out here. Actually, what comes to your mind when you hear the word village? Vast open farmlands, stacks of harvested crops, the fragrance of fresh fruits, hens clucking about, farmers working in the fields, and tractors plowing the fields too. Look at all these. Can you find something common amongst all these products? Well, everything that you see here is a product derived from... <laughs> That's right, agriculture. Now, what do we mean by this word agriculture? Agriculture is derived from the Latin word agar, meaning field, and colo meaning to cultivate. So, agriculture is the science and art of cultivation on the soil, raising crops and rearing livestock. Agriculture is also called farming. Now, if you are living in a city or town, probably you might have purchased these items from nearby supermarkets. All these products are obtained from agriculture. These agricultural products are grown as crops by farmers in the farmlands. Once these are cultivated and harvested, they are sold in the market. And that's how these products reach us. However, this is not always the case. Sometimes farmers cultivate crops only for self-consumption and not to sell in the market. Now this type of farming is known as subsistence farming. On the other hand, cultivating crops in large quantities primarily for selling in the market is known as commercial farming. So, farming can be classified into subsistence farming and commercial farming. see what subsistence farming is. Now the word subsistence means the action of supporting oneself at a minimal level. The farmers who practice subsistence agriculture grow their crops mainly to meet their daily food requirements. Subsistence agriculture generally involves the use of low levels of technology and household or community labor. Now, based on the way it is practiced, subsistence agriculture can be classified into two types. Primitive subsistence farming and intensive subsistence farming. Primitive subsistence agriculture is also known as slash and burn agriculture or shifting cultivation. For slash and burn cultivation, a patch of land is identified in the forest. First step constitutes the cutting of trees in that patch of land. The treeless patch of land is then set on fire. Burning provides suitable conditions to crops because their main competitors like weeds and threats like pests are destroyed. Burning also provides nutrients that deposit on the soil in the form of ashes. The seeds are sown. And the crops are harvested once they mature. The farmers use primitive tools like hoe, dow and digging sticks and household or community labor to cultivate the land. They do not use chemical fertilizers or pesticides to improve the output. Crops like maize, yam, potatoes and cassava are cultivated. Once the harvesting is done, the same patch of land is used again. This cycle goes on for a few years 
until the soil loses its fertility. Once that happens, that piece of land is abandoned and a new patch of land is identified and we go through the whole process again. Meanwhile, the lost nutrients in the abandoned patch of land are replenished by natural processes. As fertilizers and modern inputs like tractors and harvesting machineries are not used, land productivity is low in primitive subsistence farming. Another type of subsistence farming is intensive subsistence farming. In places where farmers have small plots of land but need a high output to feed a high population, they tend to indulge in very intense farming practices like the use of a large workforce, high doses of biochemical inputs like fertilizers and pesticides and advanced irrigation techniques. All this is done in order to obtain higher production output. However, all these practices have led to the deterioration of soil quality and have caused quite a bit of damage to the natural environment. But how do people end up with small plots of land which push them for intensive farming practices? Well, one of the reasons for this is the right of inheritance. This has led to the division of land into smaller fragments among successive generations. Due to this, the land holding size has been decreasing. In the absence of an alternative source of livelihood, they are forced to do such intensive farming, creating enormous pressure on agricultural land. With increasing population, as land holdings keep becoming smaller with time, our challenge would be to ensure that we do not destroy our natural environment by chasing higher productivity. Subsistence agriculture meets the daily requirements of farming families. But agricultural products are necessary for all. People buy these items from the nearby stores or supermarkets, be it rice, tea powder or milk. Now this demand is met by commercial agriculture. The kind of farming in which crops are grown and animals are reared for selling in the market is known as commercial farming. In this type of farming, Crops are grown in considerable quantities in large farms. Unlike subsistence agriculture, where household labor is used, commercial farming involves the use of machines for most of the farm work. It also involves the use of modern inputs, such as seeds of high-yielding variety, chemical fertilizers, insecticides and pesticides to raise productivity. Now, what are the crops that come under commercial farming? Well, it is a little bit tricky. This is because the degree of commercialization varies from one region to another. For instance, in Haryana and Punjab, rice is a commercial crop. But in Odisha, it is a subsistence crop. seen vast stretches of land like these with coffee or tea cultivated in it. Beverage crops cultivated in this way are used as raw materials for respective industries. This type of commercial farming naturally involves the cultivation of crops in rotation. Come, let's go up and explore the tea plantation. Wow, it's so refreshing to have a cup of tea. The journey and process behind this starts here. Tea is produced
produced from leaves of tea plants. To collect tea leaves, manual laborers are required in large numbers. After tea leaves are collected, they have to be processed before they get spoiled. Therefore, factories that process tea leaves should be located nearby or inside the plantation itself. Once processed, the final product is sent to the market. For smooth functioning of this entire journey from farm to market requires a well-developed transport and communication network. The major crops that are grown in the plantations are coffee, sugarcane, cashew, rubber, banana and cotton. Tea in Assam and North Bengal. Coffee in Karnataka. These are some of the examples of plantation crop cultivation in India.